Good morning from Bear Country, California. I'm Dr. Caroline Heldman, and it is the third week of July, 2021. Eyes were big as saucers because she had never seen cats that big. So bears and humans living in harmony. Let's jump into our headlines. Not so harmonious. Uh, Top Biden allies are pleading with him to get rid of the filibuster so that he can pass, or Democrats can pass major voter protections. Uh, earlier this week, President Biden gave a major speech on voting rights and restrictions. He called the attacks on voting rights uh, that are being uh, perpetrated by Republicans across the United States, uh, quote, the most significant test of American democracy since our civil war. Does this mean he will embrace eliminating the filibuster? Let's talk about what the filibuster is. It is the power of one senator to stop the business of the Senate. And they do this by getting on the floor of the Senate and standing there and talking. Now they just need to keep talking and talking, whether they're reading from a recipe book or they're reading from the newspaper or they're reading a novel, they just need to keep talking. And this allows one single senator to tank major legislation, it gives them a lot of power. In order to shut that down, you need 60 votes. Well, there's no way Biden's going to get 60 votes in the Senate in order to pass SB1, which is this major voting rights protection act, right? No way that's going to happen since every Republican opposes this. Why? Because having everybody vote and having free and fair elections uh, benefits Democrats, right? So they want to suppress a vote. They want to suppress Native American votes in the state of Arizona. They want to to suppress black votes across the United States, Latinx votes. They want to suppress the votes of people of color because they're more likely to vote Democratic. That's the bottom line. So um, it is not likely, it's zero likelihood of passing with 60 votes. It could pass with 50 votes plus Harris breaking the tie, and that's the number of Democratic votes in the Senate. But in order to do that, they would have to eliminate the filibuster, eliminate the ability of one senator to do this. There are two Democratic senators who will not vote to eliminate the filibuster. That's uh, Kristen Sinema from Arizona and Joe Manchin from West Virginia. They're both in pretty conservative states and have won election regardless of that. And so they are taking some pretty conservative positions. However, Joe Manchin in the past week has shown some willingness to consider eliminating the filibuster. So if he is in for that, that means that Kristen Sinema will be the lone senator standing in the way of passing major voting rights legislation. And that would put immense pressure on her. Um, I don't know why Joe Biden is is not willing to consider this, uh, especially considering that at various points in time, Democrats and Republicans have just eliminated the filibuster, mostly to get nominees through for court positions. For example, uh, Mitch McConnell eliminated, eliminated the filibuster in order to get Amy Coney Barrett rushed through and onto the Supreme Court in the last few weeks uh, of Trump's presidency. So it's not unprecedented to eliminate the filibuster. Um, one more option is that Joe Biden uh, might be convinced to embrace eliminating the filibuster for major legislation that pertains to the Constitution, which this does because it's about our democracy and voting rights. So let's see what happens there. But suffice it to say, Biden is feeling the heat from his own party to protect our democracy. Uh, second major headline, a new report from the Inspector General of the Federal Bureau of Investigations reports that the Bureau did not properly investigate multiple sex abuse allegations from gymnastics uh, stars and trainees against Dr. Larry Nassar. Uh, if you recall, Nassar is in jail for the rest of his life. He's serving a 60-year sentence and a 40-year sentence for various charges, uh, and they uh, run back to back. So that's the rest of his life in jail uh, for sexually violating over 200 girls and women. So uh, why wasn't this investigated more quickly uh, and more effectively? The inspector general concluded that despite, quote, the extraordinarily serious nature of the allegations and the possibility that Nassar's conduct could be continuing, senior officials at the FBI Indianapolis field office failed to respond to the Nassar allegations. Uh, who are these people? Well, most of them are unnamed, but one uh, bureau uh, chief, Jay Abbott, has been named. He was in charge of this, and he stalled this for an entire year, resulting in at least 70 more girls and women being violated. Uh, why did he stall this? Well, they uh, 
investigated and found that he was getting a job with the Olympics Committee or he was trying to get that job. He didn't get it, but he was pressing to get a job with the Olympics Committee. So he had a clear conflict of interest. And when the inspector general of the FBI uh, came and asked him about it, he lied and said he was not applying for that job, even though internal emails from the Olympics Committee uh, show that he was lying. So uh, what is this? This is institutional betrayal from the Olympics Committee. This is institutional betrayal uh, from uh, the folks who are running the facilities where Larry Nassar had access to girls and women. Uh, this is institutional portrayal from the Federal Bureau of Investigations that is supposed to protect and defend its citizens, right? The citizens of the United States. So why is it that uh, we see what we call, what Jennifer Fried has termed institutional betrayal so common? with sexual violence? Well, because most survivors of sexual violence are women, not entirely, uh, but most, a majority. And we live in a patriarchy where we value men and what they do more than women and what they do. And we also live in a rape culture where we don't take rape seriously. How do we know we don't take it seriously? Because fewer than 2% of men or rapists ever spend a day in a jail cell. And I say men because 99% of those who engage in sexual violence, perpetrate sexual violence, are men. Uh, and that brings us to Simone Biles, who's headed to Tokyo for the delayed Olympics and over 200 other women not getting the justice that they deserve. Let's move to our next headline. Um, Joint Chiefs Chairman uh, Mark Milley came out in a new book and said that the generals were very worried that Trump would run a coup after he lost the election. In fact, um, he likened the threat to the 1933 attack on the parliament building, the Reichstag building, that enabled Hitler's rise to power. So the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the top military brass, were as worried about a military coup as historians and political scientists who are watching the big lie unfold in real time. Um, this is really troubling. It means that our fears uh, were, were well placed. But what is reassuring is that Millie and other generals were going to stand in the way of it. They were going, they were not going to engage a military coup if Donald Trump came to them and asked them to do so. The big question is uh, what they actually did between the election and January 6th uh, in order to prevent what happened on January 6th. Um, I just want to read a couple of the quotes from the books. Um, Milley said he feared an American equivalent of, quote, brown shirts in the streets. Um, that, of course, are, is a reference to the paramilitary forces that protected Nazi rallies and really enabled Hitler's ascent to power. Um, the same evening later in the book, Milley called an old friend to express concern that those close to Trump were attempting to, quote, overturn the government. Uh, quote, you are one of the few guys who are standing between us and some really bad stuff. His friend told uh, General Milley and Milley said he was very shaken. Um, he also said, Milley said that he called H.R. McMaster to ask whether a coup was actually imminent. Quote, what the fuck am I dealing with? Milley asked him. These are the, the top generals worried about a coup from Donald Trump. Uh, we still need to be worried about what is happening in our democracy because according to a new poll, Donald Trump is still the favored candidate in the 2024 presidential race. It's interesting how a lot of the headlines are saying, well, DeSantis is a strong number two. Yeah, but he is 20 points behind Donald Trump who still has the majority support for the Republican party. As I have said many a time, Donald Trump taps into folks who are concerned about a shifting social order. Women, people of color getting more power, power that they believe you know, should, is rightfully theirs. Uh, and so there's a lot of aggrieved entitlement. This idea that the social structure is supposed to work a certain way, it no longer works that way because there are more people at the table and that's really unsettling and they're, you know, Trump is able to tap into that fear-based politics. But to what end? How will our democracy suffer as a result of his uh, do anything to get and maintain power approach? Um, last big headline, Britney Spears conservatorship. Uh, some positive news here. Uh, she will be allowed to hire her own attorney to represent her in the ongoing conversations about her conservatorship. And her new attorney has called for her father to voluntarily step down. Uh, the singer also spoke in court and was crying and called for her father to be charged with conservatorship abuse, which is a real thing. Members of Congress are looking into investigating this from left, right, and center. Um, 
This is amid allegations that Britney Spears' father uh, would not allow her to get off of birth control, uh, put pressure on her to perform when she didn't want to perform, uh, you know, wouldn't making reproductive decisions for her. I mean, this is the epitome of patriarchy where you have a patriarch, a father, determining the life choices of his grown ass daughter. This is a woman who is almost 40 years old. Uh, the battle over her $60 million Million dollar estate has been ongoing since August, and this is the first kind of glimmer of hope that Britney Spears might finally be free from this at some point in the near future. As you head out into the world or stay home in the pandemic, please be gentle with yourself, be kind to others, and rock on.